There's Tony Khan's melting down again. Oh, is he um, really? I haven't even seen yeah, that. Yeah, he kind of melted down. He was responding. So he will talk about that very first. He okay. responded to a uh what's that guy's name? WWE real one on X. He's like, Hey Tony Khan, can I get a shout out for my birthday? Oh, I saw and that. Then, and then at like two or three in the morning, Tony Khan's like, Yeah, happy what? birthday. I and, was uh, I was I was this close to having Tony Khan be like, sure. Happy birthday. Like, oh, you should have did it. I should have. But by the time I thought of it, he had already responded. And I was like, ah, it, the joke would that would die now. So we have like some Tony Khan clips, basically. And just also uh, him, you know, doing what he just doing what he does. But um, he actually responded to who was it, man? I'll, I'll look at it right here and I'll share the screen. So there's people going like, oh, the ratings were whatever. And uh, Tony Khan's responding to accounts like at Tony is a con and Tony Khan's responding to them. So it's hilarious. He had a half a meltdown again. Could you, ima could you imagine like Triple H responding to like the no. Triple H thoughts guy? No. Like, no. So here's uh, so here's um the anti the anti mark of pro wrestling shout the anti mark of at people are sharing his account around. Shout him out, I guess. He was fucking okay. uh, he came he came at me, though, out of nowhere. He's like, oh, you guys will just watch anything, whatever. I put over, I don't even know what I was talking about. Something to do with being positive about AEW. And I was just like, motherfucker. I was like, dude, you're, I was like, you're just as bad as all these other motherfuckers. And then yeah. he delete, he deleted and didn't respond. So I think he, he looked probably at my Yeah, he probably realized who you were. And, yeah. And, and you so were I'm like, the me, the queen? No, I'm just kidding. But shout out, Auntie Mark. I don't not like you. You just, oh, I yeah. think you just didn't realize who the fuck, like at first, you know, my angle, how I approach things. Cause I kind of went at him too. And then, we, he just didn't respond. So I was like, okay, I think we're cool. You uh -huh. know, the bull, the bulls, Chuck Torns were good. But anyways, he said, I've seen enough. I can book better than Tony gone con. This guy's fucking terrible. And I agree with the anti mark. I think fucking a child could book better if they were a fan of wrestling yeah. properly, you know? Um, and then someone responded at Tony is a con. So if someone made a profile saying at pro wrestle times is a con. I would fucking, I don't know. I guess maybe I'd respond to them. So I, I'm not in this situation. I wouldn't, but... I wouldn't respond to them. Yeah. So Tony Khan goes, responds directly to them. Actually, they were not because the show was sold out. Are oh you fucking God. stupid in a gif? And then oh. he gives, are you fucking stupid, dude? And then people underneath were like 6,100. So at in, or international wrestling at Jason St. Germain nine says 6,100 him burping the baby. This guy, Tony is the goat. Trips would never respond to anyone. So he's saying that's why Tony's the goat. <laughs> that, that's why he's the goat because he's oh he hasn't he has all this time on his hands. Oh my god. Yeah. And then honest question. Any idea why at WrestleTix would show the last dynamite held at the same arena had 7,394 fans? I'll explain it, you dumb fucks, because the Coca-Cola Coliseum can be set up for like 9,600 people. It can mm. be set up to accommodate 17,000 people, I think. Maybe not that much, but you can just Wikipedia that shit. You can look it up and you like that's that's why. You know what I mean? It's it can be changed for different setup now they did sell now for pro wrestling and boxing and mma you look at the coca-cola coliseum it sets up for 7600 okay so, and this guy's got the tweet wrong dynamite and then the rampage so people just bailed out the fucking building oh it was held the day after okay so so the thing is is yes the 61,000 or 60 6100 whoa sorry let's not wembley ourselves here mm -hmm. the thousand one hundred is a good building and they were oh. building and i'm happy for them that they did that yeah, but it shoot sell out but it, it's fucking so i don't know but just saying he's the goat for responding i just think and, that and this is the thing that that i i argue with these people about all the time when they try to talk to me about this it's it's they're like oh well you know they they put 60 you know 300 seats and they sold 6160 that's a i'm like yeah but the last time they were there they sold 7394 i know like, that's you, the thing you have yeah. to look at growth over time you year so that's over what year. i was gonna address next and they were like inflated house because canada i'm like well it's actually a diminished house because canada they were just there and Look at, you know, it's actually right. gone down to what you just said, actually. So, so yeah, you're absolutely right, man. And uh, I just think that, yeah, I don't know. Um, Hairline, what do you think about, like, this is a good house for them, right? Me and you always talk about it. They need to go to smaller houses, fill them up. And, oh, yeah, but right. The, the yeah, crowd yeah, scene yeah. Again. 
Yeah, yeah, it's the Ring of Honor tactic. They were just they know, were Canadians. Know. They were just too polite to to cheer. <laughs> right. Man. Oh, we don't want we don't want to interrupt your conversation there. Yeah. Hey, buddy, fuck you, guy. <laughs> and the hockey fight, guy. It was great. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. That's Christian. that's the one. That's the one time you guys uh, become savages is when is when the ice is when they're on the ice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true, bud. Oh fuck! Just ask Darcy Tucker, <laughs> Mario Lemieux, bud. Um, but yeah, I don't know. People are going at it. Coca Cola Coliseum, seven thousand seven hundred ninety. Yeah, but they set up seventy six for for wrestling and MMA right. and shit like that. So not hating, but also not like. I don't know for Tony to be like, it was a sellout. Like, why does he feel that he why even it? respond? If it was a sellout, let it be a sellout. Sorry. And, you go ahead. And, like, this is the thing. Like when you know that your product is good and you know that what you're doing is good, you don't have to respond to these people anymore. Like I've stopped responding to the people that are like, you play with puppets. No one watches your channel because I know that I know that that's not true. Like, I, I right. know, like, I'm secure enough in the product that I put out now, and I'm like, yeah, I don't have to respond to you. I'm just going to block you and move on. Tony Khan actually sits there, and he's like, no, no, well, dude, and that's I'm good, I'm good, I do good, I'm a big boy. And people pointed yeah. out, they're like, Tony Khan wasn't even tagged in this. He's, like, uh, looking up his name. He's vanity searching himself. Bro, yeah, and that's I'm that. Looking. Yeah, that's that sap shit, man. Like, honest to God, you know uh, what I mean? <laughs> Dude, wow. and that guy fucking he yeah, he had a meltdown yeah, to one of our listeners. Well, I don't know. He just he had a meltdown to one of our listeners. He uh alluded to me as my buddy, like our buddy or our buddy. So that's hairline's joke. Buddy guy. Yeah, that's hairline's joke t- about I'm me and Sam. Like, oh, your buddy, your guy. So he clearly listens to the show. I'm not so your guy, Twin. Yeah, I'm not your guy. I'm not your buddy guy. Um so um, I don't know. And then, yeah, apparently, like, I don't know. This this listener's gay, and he alluded that this person was being homophobic, and then he transitioned to calling me a sexual harasser to this what? person, I guess. So, yeah, dude, like, he yeah, fully melted hurt. down. And then and then he actually said that if I apologized to him, he would see where we stand about him coming on the show. Oh, now, I'll man, never dude. apologize to you, Sean. Let me just make... I'm going to oh, clip man, this, too. I'll you never apologize... On- this is what he says. He says that show? I'm he says that me and like you, anyone who fucking talks about him, he says we're obsessed. But he doesn't get I don't that. Talk, no. See, okay, so I would like to point one thing out. I don't talk no. about him. I do not. I don't know care if he said you him. specifically, but just okay. anyone like he, he was saying I, to I actually li- anyone I think that who talks uh, about him, he says is obsessed. Like he even said that to the listener. They're like, he's like, You're obsessed with me. Phil's obsessed with me. And it's like, no, dude, I'm not obsessed with you. Like, I clip Meltzer every show. I rarely make clips about Sean. I never, I rarely ever did before. He got as many clips as maybe like a Louis Dangor and Nick Hausman. I think I've clipped Nick Hausman more. So the thing is, is like, I don't hate on Sean. I'm not obsessed with you, but you're the news, bro. So I talk about wrestling and wrestling fucking news and what's going on the dirt sheets. That's what I do. And I make fun of it. So the fact that like, like the thing it's that you're like obsessed- I'm coming at you, Sean, it's not you in particular until you're you obsessed with my wrestling. DMs. Being like, yeah. I'm gonna make you fuck. Yeah, and then when I say no, dude, we obsess over the news. You got his listeners going, oh, you're obsessed over the news, and it's like, yeah, dude, we as the IWC, we're obsessive. No, like we watch, we talk about wrestling, we right. have wrestling accounts, we're all obsessive as the culture as society is. That's why clickbait exists. That's why we live in a headline culture because everyone's obsessive and fanatical about news. Like, hello, if I have to even speak that level of nuance into a conversation in 2024, you know what I mean? Like, I, I we just can't even be friends. Like, I don't have to explain the shit to Hairline or to Marv. They fucking understand this shit. But like, if you don't under, like, yes, we're obsessive about the new, I'm a, I'm a, I'm called pro wrestle times. That's a little fanatical, right. no? Have, I'm not obsessed with a show with called Sean. The Headlock Headlines. It's, yeah, you know. dude. Like, so, I, oh, no, uh, I'm now, not allowed to, I, not allowed I, to talk know, about and, Sean or else you're fucking, you have to uh, bow down. He just wants no one to trash him. So just well, I worship will give him, him whether I, he's I, right or wrong. No, fuck. I mean, I have to. I have to give him this. He he is right more often than the others. Yes. I mean, I've said he, that. I've I, said I, that. I actually like, think he's a good source. I think he's a legitimate source for news. I just, I wish that he would just like, treat himself with with some kind of like and it might be too late for this but i mean like just just you're a newsman if you want to be a newsman be a newsman they're serious they take themselves seriously they take the yeah. job seriously they don't tweet scream at people and, and do the block on block dude. game and yeah, you know he's constantly pun yeah why, like i don't why like is that. he worried it's about like when he, when, like, when he yeah. blocked me i was like okay he's gonna block me and then he's gonna 
unblock me to yep. to to come into my DMs and scream at me. So I blocked him right back. Good. Like, yeah, that's not, what you have to that. do. That's his game. That. That's literally yep. his game. Yep. And like, I don't know, man. I like he was sending voice messages to this listener. The listener asked me to delete everything that I had posted about uh -huh. it, provoking. So I did out of just so everyone knows, just out of respect for the listener, because they didn't um they were respectful and they didn't even need to share that shit in the first no, place. I get it. Right, um, yeah. But yeah, it was just a matter of like, uh, it, I don't know, man. It's just Sean, like hairline knows he just picked us out randomly at the beginning, all because I said, I never named Sean at the start. I just said, I didn't believe fightful story about Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns about them having some sort of heat and sap came after me and hairline knows our podcast first started. And it's like, we were destined to be enemies because at Christmas I was like, I'm not talking about sap anymore. I said it on the Christmas show. I was like, I'm not fucking talking about him. I anymore. remember that. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's when I first played yeah. the fucking Tony, the snowman. So mm. like, that's what I like first encountered you too. And so it was at that same time. I was like, dude, I'm just going to like, I'm not going to talk about him anymore. Like, it's just not a, like, I honestly feel bad for him, but then this stuff comes out and then I tweet out and he goes, he's obsessed with me. You can't okay, be, I'm... you can't be a news source when you yeah. are making yourself into the news. That's like me talking about fucking gas prices and then, and then Fox news going, Oh, they're obsessed with me. You know? I don't, yeah, I, like, don't, I, don't wanna see, I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to see, I yeah, I don't want to see Walter Cronkite in like reporting on news about himself, you know, like, I don't know. Right. It's I want Sean again, to come on the show. Sean, I know you're listening. Please come on PWT. We yeah, can for do real. It we can do it pre-recorded, and you can cut anything out that you don't want in it. And I, and you can scream at me, call me every name. Let's let's hash this out because it's hilarious. Well, look, and, I, uh, again, yeah. I think that I think that his body of work is good and could yeah. speak for itself. I, I, yes, I, just, I, I wish he would, I wish he would just let the body of work speak for itself. Yeah, and be like, okay, if people are going to talk about me. You know, with all these things, I don't have to respond to it because I am above that because my body of work speaks for itself. That right. that's what Tony Khan should be doing. If right. you if you are if you yeah. are confident in your work, then you don't have to fight with people. Exactly. And that's kind of right. that's where I've gotten to in the last month, and I have a much smaller audience than either Tony Khan or Sean Ross Sapp. So Absolutely, you know, man, yeah, they, no, they, you, they could, you summed it up perfectly there, and you brought it full circle as well. How about that, Marv, man? Knowing his spots, <laughs> but I got to bring it home. So you know, yeah, I knew, dude, I had no one had to bring it home. So uh, Tony Khan, though, yeah, he definitely uh, he's fucking up. SRS, you're cool, bro. We're cool. <laughs> I've said it a million times. We're cool. But um, here, so here's Mercedes Monet and Tony oh, no. Khan talking on um, talking on. This is at WWF counselor, and they're on the hub today. And this is what they have to talk about now. A lot oh, of people man. are like. Are just saying Mercedes super fake and cringe for this. I mean, she's uh, always super fake and cringe. Everything she says, yeah. she she's got the. And this is not a political statement when I say this. This is more of a hum, a human being statement. She has the she has all of the authenticity of Hillary Clinton. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah nailed it. Again, that is not to be meant as a political statement, but when Hillary Clinton tried to cry on TV, it it gave me the same feeling as when I saw Mercedes Monet try to cry on TV. When when Marty McFlyer was on the show, he had said that Monet is that he's like, dude, she's from the Bay Area. He's like, they can claim her in Boston. He's like, but she's from where I'm from. And she just claims Boston for some reason, which is funny. But he's kind of he takes umbrage with that. But anyways, I mean, Sasha was a boss, but a boss is um, someone that just demands something. A CEO is on a mission and I am on a mission to make AEW global and that's exactly what we're about to do oh my god look at him he's like, he's like a five-year-old sitting next to her with his little with his little fists shaking in the air and he did that oh stupid little smile oh my god it's like all he needs is a juice box and his think, little feet he's dangling seriously off do you think I'm, I'm shocked she's letting him sit that close to her because you remember like when she does a photo op she yeah, makes the man stand 10 feet away from her yeah, that's a big debate too. Everyone's like, "No, I got a picture with her that didn't." And it's like, I don't know. Well, I mean, that was during that was during the pandemic, but yeah, some people were doing other things. They were putting plexiglass up. They were, you know, there were other options. But she chose. She she, she saw an opportunity to have those mouth breathers stand far <laughs> away from her. And honestly, I can't really fault her for taking that opportunity. Oh man. We have the top wrestlers from all around the world. Oh. And if you watch every single week on Dynamite, you are not gonna like want to miss anything. I mean, 
you are um, not gonna like want to miss anything yeah i don't know man this last dynamite was pretty other than edge and christian it was a pretty missable right. show she I cut be. the exact same promo this week as she cut last week right the, the, i'm so happy to be here yeah, oh crazy. like pretty much and she just like referred to wwe a bunch and even oh, Meltzer, did she, who, finally, she finally fell into that trap yeah we're gonna get into Meltzer in a moment he, the one uh, thing that i said about her that i was like well at least this she didn't talk about wwe in her in her original promo i was like good for you like like don't like they should you should not be talking about them when you talk about right. them you just draw the comparison and people you don't want them comparing you right now you know especially because they're just a tv show like tony i talked about it i clipped it you know tony khan like he doesn't invest in pro wrestling like there's no performance center there he's not running house shows so it's like it, he's just a tv show so you can't punch up that's like being fucking breaking bad and then but you're gonna take your television time to take shots at fucking or bring up uh what's another good show on at that time you know mm -hmm. i don't fucking know yes yeah, so you guys get what i'm saying um so yeah, I just think it's it's even worse in that regard. Like if they were at least running house shows and doing shit like that, I think they would at least be able to. I don't know. Yeah, young young Rock didn't need to be comparing itself to Young Sheldon. <laughs> yeah, it, there you go. That's the perfect example. Mercedes, not only as somebody who loves the wrestling business, loves getting in the ring and wrestling, but loves the fans. Mm -hmm. And I think oh, yes, yeah, you look at a look at a shake a head. No, nope. mm -hmm. no, I don't. Mm -hmm. No, I do not. I hate these people with every breath that I take. Yeah, that's why I took off on them, and the, and I don't even hate on Mercedes, but yeah, that's why I left and. But I mean, like, it is so clear, like, like it is the watch when he says she loves the fans. She literally shakes her head and she's got this look of just like they like thinly veiled disgust on her face. And it's like other wrestlers don't love the fans, dude. <laughs> that's why they, right. they, they yeah. that's why everyone does it. They all no, none, of them, none of them like the fans. She's the only one. Oh my god! Just her. loves getting in the ring and wrestling, but loves the fans. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what no, we're all about. No, AEW, I don't. And I think oh. that's why Mercedes is perfect to be the fan. Put hand, AEW. put no. hand on Mercedes, hot to simulate human all, emotion. No, they're not all about the fans. I've explained this innumerable times, man. If they were about the fans, it wouldn't be like, oh, let's run these big fucking things and don't do house shows and do these big empty buildings. It wouldn't be that. It, that's all. It wouldn't be like. That's also Tony Khan can be like, oh, we're in the big leagues. Like he would run smaller buildings, like hopefully he's gonna stay doing mm -hmm. and uh things like that. If it was about the fans, it would be, be about giving small, them the best experience, not crowding them all on the fucking hard cam side. So you should you, be running small uh hockey <laughs> arenas, not like you know, giant stadiums. It's, right. And that's what the Coca-Cola thing they ran the other day is mostly used for. It's is for fucking the Coliseums, mostly used for hockey. So that's why, like, I put it over. A lot of people were shitting on it, and I was like god i gotta give a dub props where it's due like at least they're listening to things that i was like they should be fucking doing that a lot of people have been saying I'm, i didn't invent this oh they need to run smaller buildings but it's what we've been preaching so mm -hmm. i don't know that's more tony Khan delusion now we bring it back um to i'm just scrolling down to make sure i didn't miss anything um so now we bring it back to tony Khan. And um, here's something he said years ago that's hilarious how it's coming into fruition as far oh, as... Yeah, I, I included this on the Headlock Headlines this week because it was just Good. too delicious to not share. Yeah, so this is him talking about WCW's major issues, and it's like, this is what AEW's become. So it's yeah. fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah. Uh, so definitely... No, no, I was going to say, no, no soda waters. Uh no, all the water is at least eight. Yeah. <laughs> eight, eight yeah. You look at. Uh, you know, um, everything's great, and make sure uh, you don't hug talent. <laughs> <laughs> if you Check look at the state. problems you asked me earlier about WCW, if you look at problems that led uh, to uh, possibly what the demise of WCW was, I think one of the major issues was that they had a very large roster with a lot mm -hmm. of people making a lot of money, uh -huh. and a lot of those people were really good. If you were just to like try to chop down the WCW roster, you'd be making some like really tough decisions and yeah. say like because there were so many people across the board that were really good, you can't pay every talented person in the business a hundred thousand dollars. Your company will go <laughs> under quick. <laughs> Bro, he gives not talented people a hundred thousand. Oh no! I'm sure, look, so I, look, do you, do you think? Do you think Orange Cassidy is making a million dollars? Yeah. It it least oh, he's making way um, more. 
Bro, you think Orange Cassidy is making yes, over a million dollars a year? He's making over. I bet you the money he gets per year, salary wise, is less than a million. But then I, I bet you with that merch, because that merch did go. I'm actually wearing an Orange Cassidy shirt right what? now. Yeah, dude. Um, I, that shit was over with me at the start, uh, bro. Yeah, dude. Because this is why. Like, because I it's thought, because it's a gimmick that you see one time in a so Knights of Columbus dude. at an indie show, and you go, huh? Yeah, that was kind of neat. Well, Tony Khan was talking sports based, sports based, and I went, "Oh, dude, if this Orange Cassidy guy is like their junior heavyweight champ doing this gimmick, and like he and I was just like, it could work. It could work with kids. This could this could be this could when, be brilliant. But no, they're booking him as their as an American international champion whose storyline is he's injured and barely scraping by, beating all the monsters in the company." When beating Sting, all the top guys. It's like, yo, what the this is the complete opposite. Like, if he was a guy who did that gimmick and then took uh -huh. and then lost to people, that's a great idea. Like, I'm okay with that. Like, Doink isn't the bet, but he was fucking good and he got like helped get people over, dude. So, when Sting did the little shin kicks with him, a piece of my soul died. Yeah, dude. That's what I mean. And then they just they just ruined people, like not ruined, but like it just ruined Sting and it ruins like Wardlow or whoever they had, just the people they've had him beat and the story they booked him with like, okay, now imagine if they put Takeshita, this young guy, he's the international champ and he's scraped by in this tournament and he's fucking injured and it's his back killing him. And he's barely beating all the top guys as this young stud. You know what I mean? Like, there you go. But you did it with Cassidy, like the most <clears throat> unbelievable and, and here's channel the thing. flipper guy. I have a friend who, who is an orange Cassidy defender to the moon and back mm. and he will be like no you don't understand he can really work like he can really do I all know this he stuff can. He can. Yeah, and i'm like that makes a, it yeah. worse so could that sd makes, jones bro it, like it, you know it's like, so it's like, it's like when the young yeah, bucks yeah. yeah it's like it's like when the young bucks actually like went in there and they did that one match where they like worked oh, a match man. and everybody was like look they can work i said that makes it worse because yeah. now it, now you know that they know how to do it and they just are choosing not to do it. Yeah, dude. That's that's Fucking why John Moxley is the worst wrestler in the world today because uh, he knows how to do it right and chooses to do it the way he does it. And it's a real thing too. Like I'm not trying to just be a fucking hater, but it's a real thing when it comes to like look at Mox's body, look at Edge's body, look at oh, their yeah. bodies when they start going to AEW. As oh, well, has, has Edge right. has Edge become melted ice cream? Uh, uh, like no, Edge. he still looks great because Edge really takes care of himself. But you can tell there's no demand there. Oh, when like, he came back, when, when he came back at the Royal Rumble, this, yeah. when he came back at the Royal Rumble, he was shredded. Yeah. Look at like his last than... match with Sheamus on mm -hmm. WWE. Just look at a picture of that, and then look up him like at like when he's got that paint on his face the other week with the spiked bat. You know, uh -huh. just look at the difference. It's like Ugh. it's not huge because he takes care of himself well. You know, I remember watching know, like... I, when I saw him with the spiked bat and like the 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 paint under it, the grease paint on his eyes. I remember I said to a friend of I remembered a friend of mine and I watching TNA years ago, and yeah. Raven was coming out and he was wearing a gladiator helmet. And I remember my friend turning to me and saying, sometimes people's creativity needs to be reined in. Yeah. And oh, that absolutely. That's what Tony Khan's is. Like, I bet he'd have great ideas if there was a real mind there going, no, no, no. Okay. That's an no. okay idea, but this is how we get there, you know? And that's why Vince yeah, Russo yeah. was successful in the WWF because he yeah. had those filters. He had to yeah. go through. And Jericho, had... too, because yeah. Jericho had all these ideas in the WWF, but he was always political. Now he's in AEW. He has all these ideas and he's political, but there's no one filtering this shit. Mm -hmm. And that's why some of it works, like a little bit of the bubble. But then now it's just like tiresome and old, like, and it's just corny and shitty. And what he did with Hook on Dynamite was just like, come on, dude, you're what, not near, nearly kill, nearly kill him. Yeah, Lion Hook, it's great. <laughs> Lion Hook, yeah, they'll make a T-shirt, and you can keep eighty percent of the. When does his when does his <laughs> when does his contract run out? Because who, his who? Hook Here's his. His father needs to push him out that door as fast as humanly possible. Oh, you know, yeah. you, you know, Sean. You know that Sean Michaels will be rubbing his hands together to get his to, to get that boy over in NXT. Oh yeah, it'll be amazing. Quick, because you won't have enough revenue to offset what you're paying out. So you have to make uh, smart decisions, and uh, you can't hire every person you like, and you can't hire every person that you think is good because they're you know. This the right here, have NBA yeah. level contracts. I just want to remind everyone. Yeah, that. and this this right <laughs> this right here is the same thing I was just talking about, like with the Young Bucks and with Moxley and Orange Cassidy. Okay, so he obviously knows how 
how business is supposed to work and just willfully chooses to do the other thing. Really are you about stressful. to play? Are you about to play this Jericho? Yeah, clip. I but hate Marv, you. yeah, it's absolutely I what you're saying you is absolutely right. But while I was just gonna say, while on the topic of Chris Jericho, I hate um, you for making me do this. Yeah, let's do this, man. Hairline, oh. are you red? I are. Yeah. Oh, wow. This oh, is the shit. best part. This is my favorite part. This made my week, guys. Everyone, go subscribe. Hit the like. Hit five stars wherever you at. Let's do I'm it. I'm about to unsubscribe from to you for making me listen. Oh. Dancing, it's it. not just me. Oh yeah. Okay, so he's so, <laughs> many he's so have stood where I stand. We so, are young, so raise your hand. Well, he's so he's so pleased with himself. Like he did that first horrible couple of notes, and it Airlines, just it sounded it sounded like a small animal dying, and he's like smirking to himself, like I'm so talented, I'm so talented, I'm the best there's ever been. It's just such old rock star shit oh. that I kind of respect it. But look at this room; he's I, I respect just that he can get away. Yeah, with let's this. look at the room. You know what I mean. Look at the room. You got the Beatles. You got uh, Rush behind them. You got this is Star my Trek musical Leia, Lion Ha, Cortisone, De Leon. Yeah. That's what, dude, I love. I just, let's go. We call us problem uh, child. We spend our lives on trial. We walk in uh, every smile. We are the youth gone wild. We stand and we won't fall. We're one and one for all. Bro, youth gone wild, Jericho. You, you are the thing that <laughs> Auto Tune was created for. Like, oh like I, I am convinced that the person that created Auto Tune was a time traveler from now, and they were listening to Chris Jericho sing this, and they were like, "I must invent something to make this not happen, and go back in time and put it in the hands of someone so that this never happens." Come on, bro. Are you telling? Come on. The writing's on the oh. wall. We are the youth gone wild. Come on, bro. Come on. Big and wild. Wild. So, Big and wild. Okay. You know what? I want. There's something I, I. I feel like you could probably get away with playing, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna send it to you and and see if you want to play it because. Sure. Uh, it, it is. Um, here's the thing about Fozzie that always. Um, you know, really like, like makes me lose my mind. Is it, the song is actually uh, Judas is actually very good. Oh yeah. And if you hear someone that can actually sing it, sing it, it's like really good. Damnation does a cover of it, and oh, okay. it is really good. Like it's I like listened that to it. Song, um, uh, that other one they had years ago. Yo, my anime. That shit was good too, man. That was a good one too. But you know, yeah. again, if like you know, I sent it to you, so listen to it whenever you want. You can play it or whatever. But for it's, sure, it, it is. Uh, like when you hear someone that can actually sing, sing these songs, you're like, oh wow, they're good songs. It's Not just this, he, though. It's yeah. just he can't know. <laughs> yeah, dude, I need that on the soundboard. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll tap it up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now, what is he mouthing? Baby, baby. What is he doing? Like, who even uploads that? Like, who would upload uh, that? I just don't even get it. Um, shut up, like Jared. Huh? The different, it, he was saying, like, the different pitches with your, like, moving your tongue and shit. So, well, we're on the topic of, um, hold on a second. What is this? So here's a Tony Khan. Actually, before we flip off, this is all part of the Tony Khan sap Jericho clip, guys. I just formulated it in my head. And Mercedes, I guess. Who knows how we're doing it? We're young and wild and free. We're young and wild. Um, okay, here's a. We are the youth gone wild. <laughs> we are the youth gone wild. Wow, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a trombone, dude. It's just, it's like it's a, with, with, with every note he sings, he proves Sebastian Bach right. Yeah. So, here's when he Tony was arguing Kong. with Sebastian Bach, I was like, How dare you argue How with this you? man? <laughs> you know, it's crazy at AIR Gold unblocked me randomly, so okay. they had me blocked, and then just ran. It's just some like really ultra AEW stan account. And randomly, I was blocked, and then now all of a sudden, oh. like mo a month later, I'm unblocked or something. So, oh, huh. free so plug, shout right. them out, Come free on plug on, on PWT. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, yeah, so the death of AEW. Here's Tony Khan. This is the last little bit for Tony Khan here. Uh, he fucking 
this is him on Mark Marin's podcast, quote, flipping the script. Said, like, I need to get organized huh. and made a major change as big as the one I'll show you. Right. So, uh, I don't, and uh, if you, the stuff you read, I would appreciate it, Brent. I'm going to cover the future dates, oh, sure. yeah. but if you see just I, a bit of what's on here. Yeah. So I had a process. I already had kind of a schedule of what I had planned week to week mm -hmm. in different stories, yeah. for different wrestlers, different matches or segments. Right. And at some point, like I, I just kind of inverted it. I realized like I should tip <laughs> this over and instead of looking at the dates and building it out. I kind of flipped what the columns were and what the rows were and put the columns where the rows were. And now I organize everything like this since full gear. And I feel like I'm more organized, even though it's all the same information. It's just looking at it differently. And it really helps me. You what? And then come fucking poop. <laughs> Yo, oh, it was awful wrestling. that put that together. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. He's great. Dude. Shout out to awful wrestling. Bro. Oh, he's the best. Oh my God. Like, what is he even talking about? Oh, hey, I, oh uh, Sammy, I got something for you over here. And then I they, got a trio the, for you over here in two months. But then I think what you and Garcia and Jericho are doing are great over here. But let these me just are the things that he wants to talk about. Bit. But then if you ask him about if you ask him about anything even remotely interesting, I, I can't talk about that. I can't legally oh talk about God. that. He's just he's fucked, man. He is fucked. Uh, yeah, so I don't have music for that, but that's Tony Khan, uh, dummy, dumb of the week, I guess, his booking and everything. Um, 